On November 26, 2022, 12-year-old Zion Charles snuck out from his home in Atlanta to meet up with some friends who were much older than he was. He's captured here, breaking the 3pm curfew in the Atlantic Station neighborhood with said friends. Zion, according to his mother, was unruly and lacked guidance in his life. He turned to the older boys in the neighborhood who had influence over him. Police call them a gang, which at this current time hasn't been named. His mother, however, denied that Zion was a part of a gang, rather tagged along with older people in the area. Over the past few years, the young boy had turned to a life of crime. His go-to was breaking into cars and robbing them. It was that bad. His family, including his own mother, called police on at least 30 occasions to tell them that Zion was heading down a dark path. The authorities needed to intervene. Throw him in jail, his mother said. The police on every single occasion said, for whatever reason, they couldn't throw him into jail, even if it was temporarily to straighten him up. With his mother powerless, she tried her best to do right by him like every mother would. But sadly, her fears would come true on November 26th, 2022. And as the old saying goes, the street only leads to two places, the grave or jail. A short while after Zion was captured on CCTV as a part of the wider group, the group was spotted again heading into the art center Marta station. If you hadn't noticed, there's a certain individual that's missing. Who you may ask? None other than 12-year-old Zion. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, at the time this surveillance camera footage was taken, the young boy was bleeding out in the street. He'd been shot. Let's rewind the clock back a few minutes then. After the group were initially spotted on CCTV with Zion, it's being said that 15-year-old Cameron Jackson, along with another group, were in the same area. It isn't clear how Cameron and his group were known to Zion's group. Although the police stated that when Cameron and his group came in close contact with Zion's group, one of Zion's group shouted, there's Cameron, there's the ops. Again, we don't know many details about most of the people you see on the CCTV footage, but from the police statement, it wouldn't be too hard to suggest that Cameron was an enemy. To back this claim up, after those words were spoken, three people from Zion's group pulled out firearms and began to fire. There is no uh, questioning it or doubting it whether it was, you know, fireworks or gunfire because it was it was absolutely gunfire, you know, it was very loud and very distinct sound and it was very repetitious. It wasn't, you know, little cracks or pops. It was a boom, 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 boom. You know, I would say approximately 30 shots probably approximately 30 shots were fired six people were shot four injured for cameron and zion however they were shot dead cameron the intended target zion caught in the crossfire leaving their friend to die on the streets of atlanta as you know the group headed for the art center Malta station where they were captured celebrating and laughing about the ordeal After boarding the train, police say that the group began to harass members of the public and also through gang signs. Since the shooting, three weeks on from when I'm recording this video, police have gone on to arrest two 16-year-old boys and a 15-year-old boy, but their names haven't been released. 
due to their age. One of the teens was arrested in New York, but it isn't clear if his intentions were to flee. And police haven't said if that was the case, whether an adult assisted him in doing so. What they have said, though, is that the investigation is still ongoing, with more expected arrests to be made. At this moment in time, no charges have been placed against anyone from what I can see anyway, but that will more than likely change in the near future. Right now, the investigation is still fresh, even though we're nearly three weeks on, like I said a moment ago. So, the charges will probably be placed when more people have been arrested as part of this wider investigation. First, just kind of create, like, who Cameron was. Um, never in a million years would I have ever thought that I would be burying my son. And... Um, with all of the, the media and everything, it's it's been really hard. I know someone asked like, where is his dad? His dad is just unable to even be here because of the heartbreak that he's dealing with right now. Um, just to kind of share with you like who Cameron was. Cameron loved his family. Um, I homeschooled Cameron so that I can make sure that Cameron was, you know, the best student that he could be. And I have his coach here with me. Cameron has been boxing since he was nine. And we would take him to boxing like every day. Cameron boxed practice six days a week. That's how driven he was with boxing. Um, he loved animals and I'm from Atlanta. I've been here all my life. And you know, you see all of this, the violence on TV, but you never think that one day you would be waking up and it would be your child. And I've heard, I've, I've just been sitting back listening to all of the, the news reports and everything. And I wanted to, to speak because this is not about Cameron. This is not about that other little kid. This is about all of our children. And I, I really want to, you know, I have a plan. I have a solution for what's going on with our children. Um, I'm not ready to reveal it right now. But um, what I'm really committed to is that our children have a safe place. And, you know, listening to the other mother speak about not having the resources you know in my situation can't we had all the resources but the one thing that we were unable to deal with was the community the environment the city and that right there is something that i'm committed to transforming in atlanta i called everybody i could i could Oh, no, my ass help. I said, I'm a 12 year old son who did not have a father. I was, whose job? I'm a single mom. I have five kids. I'm not blaming it on the single parent because the daddy wasn't in life, but I still had to do it. I worked at two jobs. I lost my second job. I didn't have a babysitter for my kids. I had my kids coming to work with me. So that's how I lost my second job. I couldn't stay at home and hold our young hand. But I tried. I reached out to him. I would get to school. The social worker had tried. I called the police on my son. I know my son, he came in the house late. I called the police several times. Babe, I said, could y'all please lock my son? I can show y'all testaments, lock him up so he can know how I feel to sit be sat down. Please, they told me. I gotta have a, he gotta have a voice of point system. <laughs> it's, and it got, I gotta go to, I gotta take my son to the juvenile system, the juvenile to get him somebody to help him. I said, what 12 year old son, you know, running the street gonna go with, come with me? Can I come by myself and give y'all information? I'll go find my son. They told me, no, we cannot help you. My son about mental illness. He had to get that pills. It was my fault. I stopped giving him pills because he had a bad allergic reaction at school one day. I had to take five EpiPens and that scared me. I thought I was gonna lose my son then. So I stopped giving him medicine. That's why he didn't take the medicine, but he was playing mental illness. I tried, y'all. I called the police office almost 30 times. 
30 times in the last two years. They told me they can't do nothing. I said, he's out and get, breaking these folks' cars. Could y'all please get him up the street to set him down, let him know for somebody to kill my son. And I can give y'all this police officer number. I talked to him seven days ago. And I said, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Could you get my son in custody? He said, I can take him down, down to the juvenile system all day. It's up to them to keep him. And they're not going to keep him. He had to really hurt somebody for them to keep your son. But now he's hurt. I wanted him to feel it. He, I'm hurt. I wanted, I wanted him to feel how it feels to be set down, let you know this is life. Zion. But now I'm feeling hurt. My son is gone. I don't have no son no more. Oh, he's gone. And I cried out for him. I cried out for it, y'all. I promise y'all, I cried out for it. But I felt my son. I felt my kids. I felt myself. I felt like I didn't do enough. But I cried. And I cried. I called him when I was there. I cried, y'all. I cried. Because y'all, please help. Help these young boys while they still got a chance, because I don't have a chance no more. I don't. 